Hello guys, welcome back to Random Access Projects. I am your host, Pablo, and on today's video, we're going to be playing with brushless motors again, but we are gonna take things to the next level. Closed loop control. And yes, things are gonna get much more complicated and maybe a little bit boring. I've tried to use diagrams, animations, and other examples to keep you entertained. There will be also a couple Easter eggs along the video. One of them is the first microcontroller I ever used the one that taught me how to program and about electronics. So stick around and if you're ready, let's play. Let's begin by looking at these two motors. They're both brushless motors and they're both used for gimbal applications. This one is the one we used for the previous video, the open loop control video, and this one is the one we're going to be using for this video, the closed loop control system. If you see them from, uh, from the side, you'll see that they have this sort of pancake look. But this one is uh, thicker than this one. And the reason is that this one is packing a backpack. And this backpack is where the encoder is located. This encoder is what's going to allow us to have feedback on the position of the rotor and is what um, is necessary for this application. So a normal motor will just have uh, the three leads coming out, A, B, and C. And this one has the, the leads for the coils, A, B, and C, but also has this cable where the encoder uh, information is uh, transferred. If we open this motor, uh, this is the same as, uh, as this one over here, as you can see, they're the same. If we take it apart, we can see the insides. I'm going to close up to this guy here and there you can see it's a it's a PCB with a sensor and this part this is just the motor and this is the shaft this one here so this one rotates if we hold the stator and rotate the motor that shaft rotates now this is a magnet and it's radially uh, magnetized so the fields come out radially instead of actually which would be most common. What I'm going to show you now is a breakout board that has the same sensor as we have in this uh, brushless motor. So this sensor is the encoder and is made by the uh, AMS manufacturer. This is an AS5048 sensor and this is an evaluation board. So it uses this plastic bracket to show uh, its functioning. We put the plastic bracket on it and then we take this knob that is equipped with a radially magnetized uh, magnet and we just put it here. That way, we can measure the position of this knob. You can also see that the knob or the magnet is not actually touching the integrated circuit. I would also like to show you this other encoder. It's the same sensor, but it's in a different package. This one was ordered online. And uh, you, can, uh, you can use it for other motors. You don't have to buy one that comes integrated. Maybe you have a motor that doesn't come with a set with an encoder and then you can just adapt this one. And one of the things I haven't mentioned yet is that the interface is going to be either via PWM and it comes with a header for PWM and it's the same that we're using on this sensor. But we also have a pinout shown here and here which could be used for uh, taking uh, measurements via I squared C. So we have serial interface high speed with I squared C or we have uh, PWM which we might be familiar is what uh, ra uh, radio control hobby servos use for communicating so it's that interface. I want to show you here this is another kind of brushless motor a more industrial type and uh, I've been showing you gimbal 
motors but this is this uh, this guide that i'm making for you is not limited to that so what we have here this is a cnc or a, an in, yeah, a cnc application or an industrial grade uh, brushless motor and what i did on the back is with the help of some lego bits and pieces i mounted uh, one of these evaluation boards from uh, ams systems so you can see here the same sensor it's on the outside and the magnet is underneath the pcb so um, that's how this one works when i move the shaft of the motor there will be a magnet that is rotating underneath here underneath this uh, integrated circuit and it's going to be read by by the um, by the encoder so this is a different project and uh, we won't talk about this on this video I will now put this one back together. It just goes like this. Four bolts and it'll be ready to work. Um, another thing is for this video, I'm going to use a different motor. It's, it's the same kind, but it's a little bit bigger. You can see here. So this one will have a little bit more torque, uh, but apart from that is pretty much the same brushless motor a backpack with the encoder and there's a magnet in there with um, radial polarization and uh, that's it uh, I'm going to show you the setup now okay guys so this is the setup for today's video and you might be familiar for, uh, from the previous video we have the Arduino Uno with the potentiometer in analog port 1 then we also have the power supply over here with 5 volts. It can be 12, uh, depends on your setup. The, the driver, the L6234D, will actually take up to 30 volts or something like that. So use the power supply accordingly. And the motor, this one is different from last time. This one has an encoder, as we saw uh, earlier, and it's also a little bit bigger. Um, you can see the three leads coming out from the coils. A, B, and C, and then also the three leads from the encoder. Now these three leads are going to be connected using this uh, extensions into five volts uh, ground and uh, analog port three. And even though this is a pulse uh, coded uh, modulation or PWM as well, um, we're going to be using analog input three to measure the width of those pulses. So now I'm going to show you something. We have the previous video's code running on this system now. And it's the position control example from last video. So you can see how this spot dictates the position of the uh, motor. And this is a lot of fun. The response is really good. You just turn that knob and immediately you see it reflected in the motor. But this is open loop. You can see that there is even a correlation between this mark on the knob and the way the truck is located, right? But what would happen if I tried to force this into a different position? As explained in the previous video, there is some resistance. There's a certain reluctance of the motor. But after I overcome that, then I can just make it skip. And what I'm going through right now is the 11 poles of this motor. In comparison to the motor used in the previous video, this one has 11 poles. Uh, the one in the previous videos has 7. So if I just make this skip like this, you can see there's no more correlation between this mark and the um, orientation of the motor. Now I have downloaded the new code, the closed loop, and we can see that the behavior is pretty much the same in position control. There is even a visual correlation between the marking on the knob and the position of the motor's um, shaft. But the difference here is that if I try to change this position by applying force, I will be able to release and it will come back to that same position as it was before. It's not going to skip to the next step as it does in a open loop mode. It is 
applying constant torque to go back. It's almost like a spring. So when I try to rotate it, it feels like a spring is acting against me. And we're going to be able to play with, the, uh, with that spring's force or the torque that this motor applies. And um, that's going to be fun. What I want to show you guys next is this um, magnetic viewing film. This I bought off uh, eBay. You can also get it off Amazon. What this does, it allows you to visualize the magnetic fields of magnets. You can see that magnet's magnetic field. And if I turn it to the side, you can see how there's uh, this magnetic poles. You can actually tell when I'm turning it. But you cannot tell that if it's if I'm doing it from this side. Now this magnet is different from the ones we use on our encoders. The knob from this evaluation kit has a magnet and when I put this one instead of seeing a pole like we did on the other cylinder we actually see the north and the south and the lines of the magnetic field. So you can pretty much see through this uh, magnetic viewing film what orientation I have put this knob in. Same happens with this magnet. This is a normal magnet, so to say, an actually magnetized magnet. You cannot really tell the difference on the position if I rotate it. But if we take this magnet from the uh, brushless motor, you can see that there is an orientation. And this is what the encoder uh, uses for measuring uh, the angle or the position of the of the motor of the motor shaft. So uh, this is the special kind of magnet, this radially magnetized or radially polarized magnets. To better understand the proportional control system that we're about to make, I'm going to show you this other setup. And this setup uses a normal DC motor. This DC motor is controlled via power stage, which is an L298 uh, integrated circuit, and it's controlled by this microcontroller, a Parallax Basic Stamp 2. Also, you will notice over here, we have a breakout board for the AS5048 sensor. And the output of the motor is this shaft. And this shaft is equipped with a magnet, a radially polarized magnet. So this is to show some of the elements that are also present in our current setup with the brushless motor. Just maybe this will make it a little bit clearer to look at. The way this works is, if I try to move the shaft to a different position, the system will bring it back. The motor will be commanded to follow certain actions in order to make the shaft come back to the desired place. The actions that the motor will do are proportional to the size of the, of the error. So right now we see that because the uh, shaft is in the actual desired position, then the difference between these two is zero. So the motor is not doing anything right now. But as the error grows, you see there is error there. And here is the same error, but in a different uh, direction. So when we calculate this, it could be a different sign. This could be positive error, this could be negative small error, and then this could be a positive large error, and this could be a negative large error. So the motor is going to apply torque in a proportional way, applying a little bit there because the error is small, and of course in different directions because the error goes in different directions. And then in this case that is a large error, you'll see that it applies more torque. And I can feel that it's pushing the pen, so the moment I release it, it goes back trying to achieve stability near or on point. So now the error has been reduced to, let's say, zero, and the system is no longer oscillating. If I release this, you'll see that there's some tiny oscillations, some, some overshoot is happening there, but uh, that can be tuned by changing the parameters of the proportional control system.